SharePoint timer jobs are a very common way of performing an operation against SharePoint on a repeated schedule. So I can go and create my operation and I can have that run maybe every night, maybe once a week, or maybe even as frequent as every five minutes. Ultimately, I create my operation and I set the schedule for it. Because of this, it's a very common way that customers customize their SharePoint deployments. They go create their own timer jobs and specify the schedule for that timer job to execute. The problem with it is, is that timer jobs use full trust code. They get installed very deeply into the SharePoint farm. And therefore, it makes it difficult to do things like upgrade SharePoint or certainly becomes a prohibitor of moving to SharePoint online. What's great is we can, in a lot of times, take that same type of operation and if CSOM supports it, we can actually run it outside of SharePoint. And so what you'll see is we're going to use this video to show you how we can actually do that and have it run maybe in something like Windows Azure using a web job. Now, the Office app model samples out on CodePlex have some really good examples of how to write a console application that uses CSOM to perform operations against SharePoint. And that's really going to be the foundation for our timer job is a console application. Kirk Evans took this concept a bit further and said, I actually still want to use things like OAuth when I do my console application. Because the great thing about OAuth is that I can more easily get like a tenant level permission and I don't have to deal with a service account maybe having a password expire on some sort of duration. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take that same approach. We're going to take Kirk's sample and be able to actually go and, and maybe deploy that into Azure and run it as a scheduled job in the new web jobs of Azure. So let's go ahead and open up Visual Studio and I'll show you our solution. So what our solution is going to do, it's going to go out to all the OneDrive sites every night and it's going to go and place a, a usage guideline document out in all of the OneDrive. So everyone knows the usage guidelines of using OneDrive. Now, the, the, the one hackish thing that I'm doing here is instead of enumerating through all the OneDrive sites or at least looking those up in a database, I've hard coded four OneDrive sites in like a string array. And so that's just my way of shortening this demo here. But, but ultimately, we'd probably in real life go and enumerate through sites or pull them out of a database. But this is actually a very simple sample. What we're going to do is, is loop through those sites. And for each one, we're going to go out and get an app-only access token. So that's, that's one important thing we're doing here is, first of all, we have app-only permissions specified in um, this app. The second thing is we are using the app model. We're getting an access token. I'm not using a username and password. I'm using a client ID and client secret. And so I'm not going to go into the details of that because Kirk's blog does a fantastic job of showing you how you go through and use app reg new to go get a client ID and secret and how you can go and, and deploy a temporary provider hosted app to be able to trust that app ID and app secret. Ultimately, I'm going to take you to the next step, which is now that we have all that working, how we deploy it out to Azure. So here's where I'm getting the app-only access token. And then with that access token, I'm actually getting client context. So the app-only access token, that's going to allow us to operate outside the context of a user. No user has to be involved here. We're going to just run our code as, as an app. So from there, we're going to go and get the documents library for every OneDrive site. And then we're going to grab our OneDrive for Business Guidelines document and actually go and upload that into everyone's OneDrive site. So just to show you this working, I'm going to go into my OneDrive site here and just refresh it. What you're going to see is I have some documents in here, but I do not have the usage guidelines document for um, using OneDrive. So let's go ahead and kick off our project, our console application. And what you'll see is as this runs, it shows in the console, it shows every single site that's being processed. So there's one, um, there's two, and it's going to go through and process those three hard-coded OneDrive sites. So now that that's complete, I should be able to come back to my OneDrive, refresh it, and what we'll see is I have a OneDrive for Business Usage Guidelines document. Um, that's sitting here inside my OneDrive library. And the other important thing that you should note here is that it was actually uploaded by our SharePoint app. That's a really important thing here is that it was uploaded by the SharePoint app. 
That's because we're using app only permissions from our console application. So it's actually gonna say what app did this. And in this case, our app is called the SharePoint app. All right, so that's great. This is basically where Kirk Evans blog left off. So now that we have this console application that's using OAuth, using those app only permissions that OAuth provides us, we need to deploy this to Azure. So the first step to do that is we need to first make sure that all of the assemblies that our uh, console application use are set to um, copy local. So Azure isn't gonna automatically have things like CSOM. So the client libraries that I'm using, like Microsoft.SharePoint.Client and the runtime one, I wanna make sure that those are set to copy local. So you can see here I have copy local equals true, and that's gonna be really important so that when I go and package this up, um, those assemblies are gonna go with the package so that it, it, those will exist out in Azure. All right, so now that I've done that and I've, I've built the project, I next need to package this up. Now, unlike creating a traditional app, um, if I was creating a provider hosted app, I could simply publish and it would go create a .app file for me. Now this is gonna be a little bit different uh, because it's a console application. I'm actually gonna go to the output directory of my project. So here's my project. And I'm gonna go to the output directory under bin and debug. And this has my executable and all the files that I need, all the assemblies. I'm simply gonna make a zip file out of it. So I'm gonna go and say send to compressed Zip file, and there you go, I got a debug.zip. And that's actually the package we're gonna take out to Azure and run as a web job. So let's go to Azure and see how incredibly simple it is for me to take this, deploy it, and run it on a schedule. So here's my Azure management portal. And interestingly, what we're gonna use here, there's a number of different components that I can create in, in Windows Azure. But ironically, what we're gonna create is a website. Now that might not make a whole lot of sense at first, but there's a great new feature of Azure websites that we're gonna use. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on websites and we're gonna create a new website. So I'm gonna do the quick create here and we're gonna call this my SP timer job. And then I need to create this in a specific subscription. So I'm gonna go ahead and create this maybe in North America. And I'm gonna go ahead and say create. So it's gonna go create our website. And once the website's completed, we'll go into that and see how we can actually do um, a, a web job with it. So it's done. I'll go ahead and go into the website. And here's the key that we want to look at is if you look in the top navigation here, there's a new component of these websites called a web job. You can see that right here. This is what's going to allow us to go out and take something like a console application and run that as like a scheduled task. So let's do that. We'll go into web jobs and let's initiate a new web job that's gonna be hosted by this website. So I'll say add new job and it's gonna ask for a name. In this case, I'll just call it the um, OneDrive usage job. And then it's gonna ask me for the package. You can see that it's looking for a zip file. So I can simply come out and grab that zip file, that debug.zip. Um, it doesn't really matter what that file is named, so I'm just going to go with the normal debug.zip. And then it's going to say, how do you want it to run? So I could run continuously, but you saw that my console application stopped when it was done processing. So that's not good. I also can run it on demand, which means I can come in here and manually kick it off. Or I can run this on a schedule. And I'm going to go with a schedule because that's really what a, a timer job would do is run on a schedule. So I'm gonna go and that's gonna add another step where I can specify my schedule. I can either run this once or I can run it as a reoccurring job. And that's really what we want here is we want a reoccurring job. And for the sake of a demo, I'm gonna have this run maybe every two minutes. So we'll go ahead and specify this to be every two minutes. We're gonna start it now and maybe we'll end it tomorrow. So I'm not gonna run this forever. I'm just gonna run it um, maybe uh, just for the next 24 hours. Now, before I go ahead and do this, I'm going to go and delete the, um, the policies document, this, this usage guidelines, so that we can have Azure go and add it back. So I'm going to go ahead and basically delete this guy. And so now we don't have our usage guidelines in this OneDrive site. And I'm going to go ahead and finish setting up the web job. And so now this is going to go and upload the web job. It's going to go initialize it. 
and then it's going to go and start executing this on our our whatever the schedule we specified. Now, one thing you'll notice here is that um, I'll just point out a few things. One is if I zoom in here. Um, oh, I did not mean to close that. We'll go back in here really quickly. One thing that you'll see in here is that I have the ability of specifying a few things. One is um, I can I can change the schedule very easily, which is just like what you'd see when you were doing a, a real timer job within um, SharePoint. But I can also run it on demand. Again, something that is identical to what we get inside of SharePoint. So we can keep it on schedule, we can change the schedule, or we can run it on demand. So I'll, I'll jump back in here and we'll take a look at how that that looks. So I'll go ahead and go into our website. Here's the my SP timer job. We'll look at the, the web jobs. And um, just to, to point it out here, you can see here's the schedule that I can modify. And then down here at the bottom, there's the run once. At this point, you can see it's already done a successful run. So I, I have one success here. So lots of great things going on here. And we'll take a look at all of those. The other thing that I have here is the logs. So if I wanted to go read the logs and see maybe if an exception occurred, I have the ability and go in at, to actually go and look at those. Um, if I go into my schedule, what you'll see is I can see all the times that it is has run. I can actually see the all the history of it of it actually running. Um, I can go and look at a dashboard and see how many times it's completed. Um, how many times it actually failed. So I get a nice kind of high level dashboard of the health of my web job. I can scale this as I need to if I want to scale this out to support um, a, a bigger volume. Um, I can do it just like the Azure websites allow me to do. Gives me some, some neat ability to scale this out. And then again, I like I said, I have that history of the job running. So in this case, our job was successful last time that it ran. So if I go out now to my, um, my OneDrive site, hopefully what we should see is I now have that OneDrive usage guidelines document that has been uploaded via my web job in Azure. So incredibly easy to take a console application, provision a web, an Azure website, upload that console application as a web job, and now I have a very safe timer job that's running outside of SharePoint.